All right, I'm going to make some claims today about the pyramid and the, the origin of the pyramid and the construction of the pyramid and the materials of the pyramid. Now, if you want to follow up on any of this stuff, go to Mud Fossil University on uh, the YouTube channel. And there's a ton of uh, videos on here. And they relate to everything about what is our history and uh, all the petrified uh, creatures and everything. And about uh, Jesus and about... Uh, physics and about um, uh, everything that we have in our existence that hasn't been talked about and the reason it hasn't been talked about is because uh, um, academics have no idea what to say about it because they have no clue so they sort of just hide away from it and, and leave it unresolved and I'm not going to do that here so at U Mud Fossil University there's no judgments nobody's going to fail you there is no payments you have to make. You make up your own decision. You can challenge the statements that are being made. There's no, there's no effect on you. There's no co consequences. Right now, I, I say you're so vulnerable, you can't make a statement. I understand that. And even the professors can't make a statement because their peers will kill them. They, they, they're just lockstepped. And it just can't continue like this. So much is being avoided, it just can't go on. And I'm not going to let it go on. So go to Mud Fossil University, find out what's real, make your own decision. If you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, then you just go play video games. I really don't care. But somebody's got to go and put this out in an open, un, you know, un uh, questioning format. You could just say whatever you want. And that's what we want. So come out here. But you got to be respectful. If you're not respectful, I'll throw you right off. That's the way it works. I mean, that's just common decency. We're trying to find answers. We're not trying to belittle anybody. I don't want to be belittled. I don't want to belittle you. And, and when you go to school, you will be arrogantly belittled if you don't take on the professor's opinion. And, I, and, and then you'll be destroyed. And you'll be working in the mines and still paying your student loans. It's just not right. It's like a cult. You know, you have to abandon your own uh, things about God and everything else. If you go into academics, and you start talking about God and giants and aliens or any of that stuff, you're done. So, do it here. But do it respectfully, all right? That's it. Thank you. All right, listen to this. This is about kaolin clay. Now, there's two types of limestones. There's marine limestones, which is, is the sediments that fall down in the ocean. There, there are shells and everything. It's called CaCO3. There's no real metals and there's no kaolin clays. Now, then there's a tenderness limestone which is CaCO3 the same thing as your body it's called collagen type 1 it's just connective tissues they form the tendons in your body and that is really it's calcium it's CaCO3 but it has additional kaolin clays and some metals now listen to this carefully because that's the key to kaolin clay listen carefully in September of 2002 our geopolymer institute crew cast massive imitation pyramid blocks or perhaps you should say genuine pyramid blocks. We used the same kind of earthen ingredients available to the ancient Egyptians 4,500 years ago. These massive blocks have the same chemical makeup and appearance as blocks of the Great Pyramid. The limestone we used consists of fossil shells called pneumilites, like those in the Giza bedrock. Like in Giza, our French limestone is so loosely bound it doesn't require crushing. But unlike in Giza, it contains no kaolin clay. All right, there it is. There is the smoker. And I never present anything without a smoking gun. That is the smoker. No kaolin clay in the stuff they're using, which is limestone with shells. And they say in the Giza Plateau, it's the same limestone, which it is not. It is tendinous limestone with kaolin clays. And it's the reason it's so broken up like this is because they worked. And where did they work it? They worked it from up above and brought the blocks down because these tendons form square big blocks that stick straight up in the sky like plateaus. And I will show you that in a second. All right, now listen to this. They're actually going to take CaCO3, um, which is the tendinous material, and then they're going to add skin back into it. <laughs> They're actually making tendons. Now what? Listen to this. This is uh, they're doing it backwards. <laughs> Natron and kaolin clay near the limestone. 
the two components will react That's in the water Kaolin. and will institute a geological blue which will then yield <coughs> the hard geopolymeric rock agglomerated limestone. We start making the cement by mixing sodium carbonate found in Egyptian natron and lime in 500 liters of water. We then add the kaolin, inherent the to the limestone, and stir the mix it's with a wooden tool. That's the key. They missed that whole thing. Kaolin is from living creatures. They're not from marine sediments, they're from tendons. I'm going to show you what kind of tendons they come from. All right, there's your kaolin clay. It comes in the same same shades as, as skin, and it is skin. And I can show you where it comes. It's skin on just like skin on your face, and I have some showing where hairs are sticking out of it. That's kaolin clay, too. That's kaolin clay. Those are giant hairs from some giant creature. I'm just telling you that's a fact. And that's the way the giant hairs um, articulate themselves in these little panels. The black and the red is the difference between the FeO2 and the FeO3. Alright, that is a hair. And this is um, the uh, kaolin clay. And they mine it right in this area for fine china. And there's another hair right here. And there's a whole bunch of them in here. And I'll show you some other shots. Right, that's what it looks like while you're alive. That is the kaolin clay. That will literally turn into a ball of clay. And people, when they don't wash for a year, and on an Antarctica or places like that, when they come back and they wash that skin off, they say it comes off as clay. All right, you see these tendon fibrils? That's really tendinous fibrils, they're called, and they form a hex shape. That's the natural uh, way that they form when, and when they crystallize, and they're like that in your body as well. And they are independent in your body, so they can slip back and forth between each other. And, and there's a coating on them called fascia, which is kaolin clays. These are not the kind of basalt that you find in volcanoes. The basalts from volcanoes are homogenous, very fine-grained, um, and, and no inclusions in them like um, pen crisps and all that business which these have. This is what's called porphyritic limestone. It's totally different. Totally different. And they come from creatures. And that is what the Giant's Causeway is a creature. And I'm going to show you. I have a video on it. It's been there for a long time. Nobody's paid much attention. But it's a creature. Alright, now you should, I recommend you go and watch this thing complete. This has been up here for over a year. It was back on November 29th, 2015, I put this up. And this is uh, December, it's end of December, uh, tomorrow's Christmas, uh, 2016. So, well, it's got 17,000 views, but you know, anyway. Now, this shows the whole story of how these things, this, see this? This is the muscles in the body. This. Let me go through this whole thing. Hold, give me a second. All right, this is the whole idea here. They have that tendon ball, which is in the ground, and sticking up out of there is this is a tendon, this little strappy stuff sticking up. And there's an abrupt transition, which is this purple right here. It breaks flat as a pancake. And all of this structure is this stuff. It's these little tiny squares. And they go both directions. They go this way. And they go this way. So almost all the old constructions, they just took the stuff off and used it. They just skimmed off little pieces here and there and, and used what was re remained as to, to build with. And in the pyramids, they started and left the big piece and just constructed downward, I would think. Like I said, it's a blocky life. This is muscles. That's muscles. And those are the blocks that are in there. And when they petrify, they're going to petrify into little blocks. I mean, it's just what it is. Tendons are the same sort of thing. I showed you that wavy stuff in the earth. There it is. That's a wavy stuff that's a tendon mat that's, um, that's in your body. See this? Remember this. Don't worry about that. They're all the same age. But remember that structure. All right, this is the tendons. This is the kind we're talking about, but sticking straight up in the air instead of laying flat. Those are the ones that make up the pyramids and things. This is the one you just saw in that, uh, that, that hill structure before. And then all the other types are found just as well. You see the ripply ones and this kind and the little fibery ones. They're all over the place. You see this kind here? They're everywhere. 
and that's a that's a petrified tendon and that is a tire track from a four-wheel dryer vehicle and that thing hardened up about four thousand years ago approximately that is the slrp the red stuff that's on the edge of these tendons and that is a tendon that hardened up long long ago and they were driving four-wheel vehicles over it for what reason i don't know Having a good time just having playing out in the woods or maybe coming down here to make sure there was no giants left. Who knows? Alright, look at that structure. That is muscle structure and th that is exactly what's in the earth and they know that and they actually have names for all those. They call them um, foliations of the earth and they're ex identical to the um, body. It's identical. You see that? That's flat muscle tissue but in here, this is in the earth. And they give it they all these foliations, the cleavage, it bent this, it bent that. That is muscle. That is what the tendons do in your body. They wave just like that and they form springs. And in here they call it some kind of insoluble residue occurs in hinges. They, I mean, they're totally clueless. That is identical to the vascularization in your body. And they come up with some other way of claiming that this is uh, just rocks in the ground. This is the kind of structure that's in your body. And those are muscle tissues and so forth. Different, and di different areas have different types of muscle tissues. They're all separated by fascia. And I will show you what it looks like in Giant's Causeway. Now you saw the basalt columns. Those are tendon fibrils. Let me show you those first. Alright, this is what tendons looks like, look like in their fibrous little things. And that's what it makes you so you can pull back and forth on all your your uh, body parts on your fingers and your toes and all your arms they invest as a ball at the end it's called an enthesis and that ball invests into into something that, that tags it into your body into bone or other flesh or, or muscle or tendon then these fibers go all the way back and they start getting bigger and bigger and bigger and you can see they're all the same structure they're these ten they, they form these uh, hex and, and when they petrify they form here I'll show you they form, um, they just petrify in that manner. It's in the, the uh, crystalline structure of, of uh, the blood. You see that? That's, that is how these things petrify in these angles. Now, that's, this is not a tendon, but the center of that is where that's a vein. And the blood has this way of spacing itself out that creates this angular structure hexes and you see them all all it's it's a it's a known structure of of the body and of the earth it's not something that I'm making up it's just the way things work all right here's giant's causeway again you see that that is the muscle tissue and it breaks into those little tiny tabs and they're all over the place I mean this is a gigantic place it's littered with this stuff this was a very large giant you see that? Those are the tendon balls. I have a video on those as well. Those are the things that tag into your body that hold tendons into other fleshy areas, really. They're like the, um, like your muscle tissues that um, invest and if you do something full real hard, you pull one out. And I'll show you what those little balls look like in your body. Right? This is exactly what they look like in your body. That's one of those balls pulled out of, of here. And they're on these straps and, and, uh, and they pull out and that's like the anchor. And I have a video showing uh, these, and they come and see these bunches here? They come in bunches, I mean bunches, <laughs> and they're big, and they are gigantically big, and they hold into, you know, this is a microscopic shot, but, you know, creatures, we're just huge, and the, the earth is literally made of giant creatures. you got to get over it, let your mind roam in this realm, because it's fact. And if you can't get into the, the, the factual ness of this then all I can say is you're literally d delusional because this is too much fact for you to just dismiss I have DNA evidence three C three DNA tests of the Giants that I have of over 200 feet tall and it's just what it is so if you don't pay attention to it then just live your life in the dream state that you're in is all I can say you see that? You remember the blood? It's, I mean the, um, the uh, muscle tissue? That's exactly what it is. <laughs> there, is no, there is no other explanation and all of the chemistry is there. You see that? You see this reddish stuff on the outside? That's the fascia. That's the kaolin clays that I'm talking about. 
that is the key to all of this stuff inside this is basaltic limestone now it is limestone it's CaCO3 there's a ton of CaCO3 that is what your body is made of your structural components is CaCO3 it's calcium carbonates and that is in your body to give you durability and structure and that's why they're, they're all over the earth they don't go away because they don't just deteriorate easily now blood and stuff like that turns into clay and dust and sand and so forth but this stuff turns into limestone now what is on the surface of it it's this clay this little tiny slippery surface that lets your 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 tendons move up and down and 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 do all this stuff and bend and so forth in your body once you you die they they mineralize they turn hard they bond with other materials because they're no longer in a live state where they can coexist and hand off stuff and take stuff in now they say hey i'm dead i got to go find somebody to live with forever they go find a bond with something to turn it to stone now you see the kaolin clays <laughs> That's what the pyramids were made out of as well. They were made out of giant tendons. We're sticking straight up like this. And then they took the pieces at the top and they moved them down. They chopped them all and made them nice into the little edges on it. That's all they did. And, and I'll show you one that they would have a great time with. I mean, I don't know how they missed this one. Of course, it's down in South America, out in the jungle. But this, and, and these tendons, and this is a tendon, that's a tendon from a creature. And you look at the blockiness here. I have a video on this. It's extremely obvious. The blockiness going this way, the blockiness going that way. That is the nature of life. It's a blocky life that we live in. That spot across the top is the flat spot of the, the abrupt transition between the, the stripy little tendinous stuff and then you turn into the gooey stuff and I will show you some of that in a minute. This water running up is because the arterial uh, tubing that runs down into the ground where the guy's heel was is so deep in the ground that it created artesian wells and they come up here and they come up here and they come up here. They come up exactly in the spots where the arterial vascular network is located. They will take these pieces move them down and turn this right down into a nice little pyramid extremely easy actually compared to building the damn thing from the bottom up you're already starting with this block now let me show you what this stuff looks like it's so obvious it's just, they just got to pay attention all right there's some more abrupt transition tendons you see they just break them off of here and go build things with them and that's the kaolin clay the, the goopy little bloody kaolin clay it is what it is all right, this is the whole idea here. They have that tendon ball, which is in the ground, and sticking up out of there is this is the tendon, this little strappy stuff sticking up. And there's an abrupt transition, which is this purple right here. It breaks flat as a pancake. And all of this structure is this stuff. It's these little tiny squares. And they go both directions. They go this way, and they go this way. So almost all the old constructions, they just took the stuff off and used it. They just skimmed off little pieces here and there and, and used what was re remained as to, to build with. And in the pyramids, they started and left the big piece and just constructed downward, I would think. Like I said, it's a blocky life. This is muscles. That's muscles. And those are the blocks that are in there. And when they petrify, they're going to petrify into little blocks. I mean, it's just what it is. Tendons are the same sort of thing. I showed you that wavy stuff in the earth. There it is. That's a wavy stuff that's a tendon mat that's, um, that's in your body. See this? Remember this. Don't worry about that. They're all the same age. But remember that structure. All right, this is the tendons. This is the kind we're talking about, but sticking straight up in the air instead of laying flat. Those are the ones that make up the pyramids and things. This is the one you just saw in that, uh, that, that hill structure before. And then all the other types are found just as well. You see the ripply ones and this kind and the little fibery ones. They're, they're all over the place. You see this kind here? They're everywhere. And that's a, that's a petrified tendon. And that is a tire track from a four-wheel dryer vehicle. And that thing hardened up about 4,000 years ago approximately. That is the SLRP, the red stuff that's on the edge of these tendons. And that is a tendon that hardened up long, long ago, and they were driving four-wheel vehicles over it. For what reason? I don't know. Having a good time, just having playing out in the woods, or maybe coming down here to make sure there was no giants left. 
Who knows?